We are about one month into Season of the Splicer, and despite a few hiccups, it's been off to a pretty nice start. We've got tons of new loot, some really fun new activities, and of course the Vault of Glass Raid Remastered. As always, a new season means 6 new Grandmaster Nightfalls and a new Conqueror Seal to earn. Just like my last prep video, this is going to be a more general guide. Whether you are brand new to GMs or diving in for your 5th season in a row, I hope you can take something out of this and go unprepared when GMs launch on June 22nd. Last season, we got three exclusive new Nightfall drops, Shadow Price, Palindrome, and The Swarm, all returning from D1. This season is introducing three new Nightfall weapons, and as always, Grandmasters will drop adept versions. By now, you've probably already gotten your hands on the base versions of these weapons, but let's go over them anyway. First up, we have the Hung Jury SR4 180 Scout Rifle. This was a D1 fan favorite, and is the first legendary weapon in D2 that can roll Firefly. And while this archetype in D2 is a bit lackluster, Hung Jury still feels really nice to use. I believe this is also the first scout rifle since Black Army's No Feelings that can roll box breathing, making it a pretty niche PvP pick. Next up, we have the Plug 1.1 Precision Fusion Rifle, the first non-ritual weapon that can roll Reservoir Bursts. Plug 1 also features a unique new perk Cornered, increasing draw and charge time when surrounded. This is also going to be the first adept weapon to grab when the Gritmaster playlist opens up in a few weeks. Finally, we have the Uzume R04 Adaptive Sniper Rifle. This is a PvE sniper through and through. You are definitely going to want to grab a triple tap Vorpal weapon roll before the season ends. For all three of these weapons, as always, go check LightGG or D2 Gunsmith to plan out your god rolls. Alright, so as we're finalizing this video, we just learned how the weapon rotation works for this season. Uh, for the first month, it's going to be the typical rotation of Plug 1 Hung Jury Uzume. Starting on July 13th, the Nightfall Reward Rotation will enter a 4-week cycle. Week 1 grants Plug 1, Week 2 grants Hung Jury, Week 3 against Uzume. And the 4th week will feature all 3 of the previous season's weapons. So if you missed them last season, go get them. So where do we need to suffer to find these new toys? Let's see what strikes we're working with this season. This time around, we have 3 repeats from last season, and 3 repeats from Season of the Hunt. We have Glassway, Insight Terminus, Fallen Saber, Inverted Spire, Ward of Nothing, and Great Value Will of Crota. It's a weird selection, but it is what it is, and at least this means that we can find existing guides for all six and adapt them to the current meta. Grandmasters launch on June 22nd this season, with a 1335 power requirement. That's only 10 up from last season, so I'll be skipping over the power grind stuff this time around. Just do your pentacles, grab bounties, do whatever. Honestly, by now you're probably already good to go. Let's start with a quick overview of the rules of Grandmasters once again. If you've run these strikes in the past, you know how this works, you can skip right over this. But if you are new, here are the basics. GMs cap your power to 25 under level. This season's GMs are 1360, so you're capped at 1335. Your team has limited revive tokens. You can't respawn unless a teammate gets you up, which will cost a token. Champion kills give you additional revives. If your team wipes at any point, you go back to orbit. Match game is always active, there is no radar, and every strike has a unique damage modifier. These are definitely not for the faint of heart, but with enough practice and patience, you'll be breezing through and farming these in no time. The seasonal artifact shapes the meta for endgame PvE content. This time around we have some unfortunate weapon selections, but the last few columns of mods really make up for it. Let's start with the champion mods. We have Overload SMG, Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle, Unstoppable Sidearm, Overload Hand Cannon, and Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle. Honestly, these aren't great. Overload SMG should not even be considered for GMs. It works fine in raids and stuff, don't get me wrong, but in Grandmasters, it is incredibly difficult to keep your shots on a champion between stuns to prevent them from healing and teleporting when using an SMG. Trust me on this, this mod will get you killed. Overload Hand Cannon works much better, and Hand Cannons in general are a much better choice primary for GMs. Two shots on a champion, and it's very easy to keep your shots on it between stuns. Anti-barrier auto isn't too bad, especially if you snagged a disruption break shadow price last season, but it takes far too long to pop a shield safely, and unless two teammates are unloading on a champion, you're probably not going to do it, so you should probably skip this one too. Despite where scout rifles fall in the current meta, anti-barrier scout is very nice, especially when you combine it with explosive payload. This was actually available last season, but was overshadowed by anti-barrier sniper, which we do not have this time around. It gets the job done very well, and you'll have a nice range primary for the strike. Unstoppables this season are where things really get interesting. If we skip ahead on the artifact, we have Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, our special weapon of choice for the season. 
This mod is nuts. Unstoppable sidearm is fine and all, but a lackluster weapon for the rest of the strike. Unstoppable grenade launcher though, oh boy. This works with anarchy, this works with any breach loader launcher. It's disgusting. You can tag an unstoppable with anarchy for a stun, and it'll stun again when it wakes up. And if that's not all, wait until we get to the last column of the artifact. So let's go back to the rest of the artifact mods. The second and third columns don't really have much to offer, but the one point scav mods for GLs and rockets are pretty nice, as are the one point versions of Argent Ordnance and Ashes of Ashes. Argent Ordnance in particular gives you a very nice buff to rocket damage, and Divinity users might want to use this because you'll usually be using a rocket in your heavy slot. Aside from those, you have some dexterity mods and such, but honestly, none of these are really worthwhile. Dex mods aren't too important in PvE, and if you really wanted these for PvP, they are very off meta choices. If you want them, pick them up, but I wouldn't recommend them. In the fourth column, pick up Unstoppable GL and anything else you like to open up the last column. Skip the Warmind Cell Champion mod. You just never want to rely on Warmind Cells in a GM in general. You're really just not getting the kills to proc them most of the time. And relying on a cell to stun a champion is a recipe for a wipe. Sundering Blast is interesting, definitely a fun one. Stun a champion, get an explosion. But it's not very practical in most situations. Take it if you want it. Overload Arc Grenades are really nice for Warlocks and Titans, and Unstoppable Void Melee can be clutch. But really, in this column, just grab the Unstoppable GL and anything else that sounds interesting. Finally, the fun stuff. Breach and Clear may be the best artifact mod we've ever seen for GMs, considering the Anarchy meta. I don't have the numbers, I'm not a numbers guy, but this thing applies a damage debuff to bosses and champions just by hitting them with a GL. And that, again, that includes Anarchy. Not only does this give a damage buff, but as soon as you proc the buff, it reloads your stowed weapons. So let's go back to that unstoppable GL clip. Did you notice the yellow numbers and the blue visual effect on the champion? That is caused by breach and clear. This thing will melt champions. To balance this out, it is a 9 point class item mod. You can't really use much more with it. But it is worth it. If you are running anarchy, you want this mod. Pick this one up. Let's keep going. Glacial inheritance can be nice, but it's a class item mod, so you can't use it with breach and clear. It's still pretty nice for Warlocks and Hunters if you're running Stasis. But really, Stasis subclasses and GMs are not really about the supers, but more about the rest of their abilities. Warmind's Decree can be fun if you have some slots in the artifact to fill out. Make Warmind cells with Void Grenades, Void Splash Damage. Really cool stuff. Grenade mod is going to be situational, but if you are doing a Shadebinder turret build, this is going to be a way to go. Finally, Enhanced Dragonfly. It's kind of fun, but not really for this kind of content. So I'm kind of realizing now that I skipped over armor in my last season video. But let's not make that mistake this time. For all classes, you want to prioritize recovery and intellect. Anything else really depends on your class and build. Load up your helmet with appropriate ammo finder mods, ashes to assets, whatever you want to use. The arc combat mod slot doesn't really have a whole lot of options for GMs. Powerful friends, maybe for mobility boost on a hunter. Reactive pulse for overshield with Aeons. A loose and blade if you're a psychopath running a sword and a GM. But that's about it. Arms will cover your champion mods. If you're not running a weapon with intrinsic champion abilities, then you always want to run both types of champion mods. Otherwise, slap on fastball anything else that you like. The solar combat mod slot can increase charge the light stacks, do some fun warmind builds, stuff like that. Here are some interesting options. Void armor is almost always reserved for protective light. Nothing else really here is worthwhile for GMs, but protective light will save your ass. Put this on if you can. Your test piece should have two resist mods. These are one point each and they stack. Slap on at least one concussive dampener mod. The other one will depend on the strike. Throw some ammo scavengers on your boots, fill out your combat slot mod, put on your stat boost and you're good to go. Your class item is reserved for artifact mods. If you're using a grenade launcher, put on breach and clear. Otherwise, your choice. Bomber on solar, perpetuation on the void, good options. Just a finisher, always a good option. But again, if you're running breach and clear, that's it. With the armor out of the way, let's dive into classes and subclasses. The subclass meta last season shaped up interestingly. Banner shield has always been clutch, but running two banner shields and swapping back and forth made for some really easy clears. Chaos Reach of Stasis subclasses surprisingly reign supreme, and Shadebinder really put in work with those turrets. I even put up a day one video of Devil's Lair on the Chaos Reach Thunder Crash and Shadebinder build, calling it ridiculous, and that became the season's meta. Focusing Lens has been replaced with Breach and Clear, but aside from that, I expect this season's GM meta to play out very much like last season's. As always, Hunters should use Bottom Tree Night Stalker for Smokes and Tether, or Revenant for Crowd Control. 
Night Stalkers will want to use the Omni Oculus chest piece and focus on keeping your team invisible as much as possible, using smokes to skip difficult areas, get into better positioning, or revive teammates. Heather can shut down groups of abs nicely and do some nice boss DPS. Revenant should run Aeon Swift for finishers for ammo. Backers can work for solid DPS if you're running Anarchy, but Aeons will be better overall for your team. If you want to get spicy, you can run Bottom Tree Gunslinger with Aether's Embrace for Unstoppables, but I really would not recommend that for farming runs or for newcomers. Could be fun. One more thing to consider. Even post-nerf, Star Eater scales are very good. You can get a lot of super regen, your super will hit harder. Definitely worth considering, although might not be worth running over Omni Oculus or Aeons. Warlocks are monsters in Grandmasters. Middle Tree Stormcaller with Geomags and 100 Intellect will have you throwing Chaos Reaches out constantly. Combined with Breach and Clear, you'll be taking out bosses like nothing. Shadebinder with a Bleak Watcher turret can shut down entire rooms. Run it with Verity's Brow, a strong energy weapon, four firepower mods and taking charge, and you will make short work of every single encounter. This is really nice for the Insight Terminus boss, by the way. Middle Tree Dawnblade with Fiend's Protocol, it's a good safety pick, but Well of Radiance is definitely a bit weaker in GMs than you would think. You can still get killed in a well very easily. The meta for Titans and GMs is Banner Shield with Ursa Furiosa, but they do have some other viable options. Banner Shield is incredibly strong, and combined with Ursa's, you'll be an unblockable wall protecting your team and recharging their supers. Run two Banner Titans, and nothing will get past you. Just make sure your teammates are aware that not every ability can pass through a Banner Shield. Thunder Crash combined with Curious of the Falling Star is basically a riskier Chaos Reach. The rest of the kit really isn't too bad, but the super alone can one-shot a stun champion, or really cut into a boss. Just make sure you get back to your team safely. Bottom Tree Sunbreaker, honestly very overlooked. This subclass has phenomenal adcure potential, even on GMs, and Sunspots provide some really excellent healing and buffs for your team. Combine with Phoenix Cradle to really maximize those Sunspots, and you'll be shredding through these encounters. So you have your subclasses picked out, you're putting your build together, but what weapons do you actually want to use? Our choices this season are Scouts, Hand Cannons, Sidearms, and Grenade Launchers. Generally, if you're not running Divinity Ariana's Vow, or in this season, a special grenade launcher, you should always be running double primary to handle both champion types. Let's look at our exotic options first. Divinity is always nice. Instant overload, consistent stun, and a damage debuff. With overload hand cannons being our only viable option this season, no more overload bow, this will be seeing a lot of use. Pair it with a lasting impression rocket launcher, and you can even do some nutty DPS on your own. Anarchy is always and forever the endgame PvE meta, and with Unstoppable GL and Breach and Clear, this thing just got so much more powerful this season. It speaks for itself. Just remember, to conserve your ammo, you only need two bolts on a target at any given time. Ariana's Vow hits hard and covers barrier champions very easily. Always a great choice, especially if you have the Catalyst. If you don't have Anarchy, using your exotic swap for Izanagi's or Xenophage is a worthwhile option. But just remember they do not have any champion properties or mods this season. Similarly, Sleeper Simulant might be worthwhile. Right now it only has a 3% buff compared to 15% of other linear fusions. Maybe by GMs it'll be fixed. If not, I never said anything. Deathbringer just got a new catalyst and honestly it's kind of slept on. This thing can clear an entire room and now it can create more mind cells. A little off meta, but nutty damage. If you want an unstoppable exotic but don't want to use anarchy, honestly, Leviathan's Breath kind of slaps. It's very slept on. It is strong. It does damage. Give it a try. Speaking of unstoppable exotics, Bastion just got a small intrinsic buff to handle them. Maybe worth trying out. Who knows? And yet another unstoppable, the new Stasis Sidearm. Honestly, this thing doesn't feel that great to me. But I mean, it does freeze targets. It does have unstoppable with a mod. It could be nice. Honestly, it could be nice. Antibarrier Scout works very well with Polaris Lance and Dead Man's Tail. If you want to use your exotic slot for either of the two, It'd be worth a shot if you're feeling confident. And finally, if you really want to use Overload SMG, Risk Runner has actually been successful for a lot of folks on Fallen Saber in particular. This is honestly the only SMG that can effectively use this mod in endgame content, but it works for you. There you go. Legendary weapons, I'm going to be going through some of my favorites just like last time and throwing some ideas out there. The key things for any legendary weapons are consistent damage, fast reload, and range. Scout Rifles are going to see a lot more use this season than the last, and the list has not changed much from my last video. Nightwatch, the go-to Kinetic GM Scout. Shalhan gives you this curated roll during the New Light campaign, so if you haven't done that already, go pick one up. 
Explosive Payload is one of the best perks in the game for GMs, and Overload pairs very nicely. Another great exotic option, use Hung Jury to get your Adept Hung Jury. Rapid Hit or Surplus combined with Explosive Payload or One for All will make this thing a GM monster. Firefly is fun, but not really an endgame perk. The Curated Transfiguration from Last Wish, also another option, kind of similar to Nightwatch. Personally, I steer away from on-kill perks like Outlaw for GMs. You won't, you won't be proccing these too much. Guided Sight can roll Rapid Hit. Could be nice if nothing better. And just the meme a little bit here. If you happen to have an Adept Scholar from Trials with Warped Weapon, I know, you can slap the Adept Big One spec on here, which actually might make this worth using. For your energy slot, you've got some pretty nice options. Vouchsafe is probably the best Void Scout right now. Rapid Hit Explosive Payload is a nutty combination. I swear by this thing. Alternatively, Royal Chase from Season of the Hunt could get the job done, but Vouchsafe has better perks. Eternal Blazon, this is a world drop scout and I believe the only viable arc option right now. The sink and roll disruption break, increasing kinetic damage after a shield pop, fantastic weapon. Vision of Confluence from Vault of Glass, a little underwhelming, sure, but honestly, it can roll disruption break, surplus, frenzy, there are a lot of good options. This is probably going to be your go-to solar. Alternatively, you can try the Pletus Corrector, a reissued future war crime scout. Seems like a nice solar option, I haven't really tried it yet. And Trusty from DSC is fun, but not really suited for endgame content. But if you really need a solar scout, give it a go. My hand cannon recommendations are largely unchanged from last season. Though overload instead of unstoppable does mean that you want faster reloads and consistent output in order to keep shots on them when they're not stunned. My go-to kinetic option will always be the 7th Seraph Officer Revolver with 4 times the charm and time payload. Time payload is very similar to close to payload, some different numbers, different feel. See so I can make war mine cells, roll drop mag for faster reloads, arguably the best PvE 180 in the game. The other nutty kinetic option right now, Fate Bringer with explosive payload. Firefly or Frenzy in that last slot and you're set. This thing hits like a truck, but it does have a slow reload speed to compensate. True Prophecy is viable, though 120s can be tricky to use for overloads. Can't go wrong with these perks, Explosive Payload is nuts. The new Crucible 180 Survivor's Epitaph has a massive perk pool, a few nice options. Personally, I would go for Surplus or Rapid Hit and one for all for a PvE roll, but good luck farming it. Moving on to energy weapons, the King is going to be Palindrome from last season. If you snagged an Adept one for all roll, you are set. Put on Adept big ones and you're good to go. Alternatively, I swear by my bottom dollar with Explosive Payload and Surplus. Rapid Hit works too. This thing will carry you far. Igneous Hammer, another gun that can roll Rapid Hit one for all. See where I'm going with this? These perks? Yeah. If you have an Adept version, slap that mod on. If not, Major Spec will serve you nicely. If you want a faster Solar Hand Cannon, maybe go for Ancient Gospel. After some thinking, Posterity is probably the best arc option right now for Hand Cannons. Although honestly, we won't really need arc primary as much on these GMs. Again, go for the same kind of perks. Waking Bitch could work, Finite Impact could work. You've got some nice options, but Posterity is the go-to. Look, I'm going to be honest. You're always going to be better off using a special Unstoppable Grenade Launcher paired with Antibarrier Scout over Unstoppable Sidearm. Sidearms feel inconsistent. You need to hit a lot of shots to stun. They're not good. If you really do want to use one, there are some decent choices. Just remember to go for consistent damage perks like one for all, and reload perks like Surplus or Rapid Hit that don't require your kills. Real quick, Farewell is good, High Albedo isn't bad, Rest Attacks is good, Pulse Remedy might work, Keening is actually really nice, Vision might work for you, Seventh Seraph SI2 actually really good and can make War Mind Cells. If you are a masochist, try Drang. Honestly, just use a GL. So speaking of GLs, we don't really have a lot of options that weren't Sunset, but the ones we do have are very good. Key points for grenade launchers are to go for blinding or spike nades and fast output, like Ambitious Assassin. Most are pretty similar, so we'll just kind of breeze through these quickly too. Ignition Code is the new and only kinetic option. This thing is nuts. This can roll over weapon. This can roll slide shot. This can roll both grenade types that we care about, and a lot of other fantastic perks. Farm this thing out. Get a good one. Truth Tower is an unbeatable classic and covers void shields. Auto-loading really helps this one out. It doesn't have much going in the last slot, but pick a nice damage perk. Salvager Salvo from last season isn't too bad, and it can toggle for a weapon, but it only offers spike grenades. If you just want to cover arc shields and output good damage, go for it. Empty Vessel is essentially a solar truth teller, if not better. Spike or blind grenades, auto-loading and business assassin, for a weapon, disruption break, fantastic options. Unfortunately, it's a strike drop with a huge perk pool, so it's going to be hard to farm. Deafening Whisper honestly could work. This can also make Warmind Cells with Warmind's Decree. 
Wayframes are kind of slept on. They do prog both Unstoppable Jail and Breach and Clear, and they work surprisingly well. And a very quick glance at some heavy grenade launcher options. If you're not using Anarchy, just pick something you like. The same principles apply. To be honest, none of these are spectacular in this kind of content, so you may be better off running a different kind of heavy weapon. Heavy weapons. Anarchy. Anarchy, 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 Anarchy. That is all you're using. Trust me. Okay, but actually, if you're not using another exotic, just use Anarchy. Even if there are no unstoppables, use Anarchy. Okay, but if you do want to use a legendary heavy of any other sort, there are some nice choices. Lasting impression rocket launchers are fantastic, especially when paired with auto loading. We also have the one point R to ordinance mod this season, so they're a pretty great choice. The best by far is Royal Entry, the strike drop rocket launcher. This thing is precision frame, so it essentially has tracking module built in, and then you can get auto loading lasting impression on this thing. If you had to get a good one, so my personal go-to is the Trials Rocket, tomorrow's answer. Impact casing is vital for a lasting impression rocket launcher. You can either get tracking module or auto loading, but not both. Code Duello, decent solar option, and roll the same perks. And He's in Vengeance, the Vault of Glass rocket launcher, also has some good perks. This can roll overflow lasting impression. Give it a try. Don't want to use a rocket? Go for a threaded needle linear fusion. With the 15% buff this season, a rapid hair auto loading needle with four weapon will do some nutty damage. I paired this thing with Wither Horde on day one VOG and it hits like a truck. Finally, LMG options. In the past, machine guns have been really nice for fast ad clear on GMs, comparable to SMGs in most PvE content. The seventh tier of Saw is probably the arc go to. This thing covers arc shields, creates war mine cells, all that fun stuff. The swarm feels like a more accurate Saw practically a laser and can roll some really nice damage perks. Corrective measure from Vault of Glass. This thing is nuts. You can get some nice perks on this guy too. Shattered Cypher, the only 900 in the game right now that isn't Sunset. Kind of replaces Delirium. You get Rampage on this thing and it goes hard. Commemoration, always good fallback. And if you have a nice Avalanche from Dawning last year, this can cover solar shields pretty nicely. An LMG in a GM is just an ad clear monster. If you really, really want to use an AR or SMG, there are some nice options out there, but again, scouts and hand cannons are going to be much better choices. But hey, do your own thing. Season of the Splicers Grandmaster Nightfalls offer some really interesting rewards, and the artifact mod shook up the meta just enough to keep things interesting from last season. Expect this season to be very similar to last, with some more difficult strikes, and a return to mostly light subclasses. If you found this guide helpful or have thoughts to add, let me know. Click the subscribe button. I stream Destiny 2 most weeknights over on Twitch. Check the link in the description. All that fun stuff. Once GMs launch, as usual, I'll be dedicating a few nights a week to helping folks get their clears, get their farms. So if you're looking for a helping hand on PC or just want to show support, shoot a follow and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Get your vaccines. Good luck out there.